Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make another shirt that has two fan folds. I made one of these not too long ago and I did a fan fold that was purple and one that was blue. And I thought the shirt turned out looking pretty interesting so I decided to try it again. This time I'm using a long sleeve shirt though. I'm going to start by using a piece of kite string and a washable marker to draw an arc on one corner of the shirt and the opposite shoulder of the shirt. When I say I'm going to do two fan folds, you probably thought that I was going to fold the shirt in half or fold it diagonally or tie both of the fan folds at the same time. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tie them separately and I'm going to dye them separately. Once I have the line fan folded, I'm going to tie it with some kite string. You could also use rubber bands if you'd prefer. I'm also going to do some fan folds on either side of this initial line. I forgot to mention when I very first started out, I put one dot kind of in what I thought was close to the middle of the shirt. I made sure that I didn't extend the fan folds beyond that portion when I tied the bottom area. Now I'm going to draw the arc on the top part of the shirt and fan fold it the same way. I want to leave an area in the middle between these two folds that doesn't have specific fan folds and isn't tied. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is dye each one of the fan folds independently and just kind of let the dye creep into the other area. Because this is a long sleeve shirt, I've kind of got the sleeves that I need to contend with. I don't want them to be totally hanging down, so I'm going to loosely fold them and kind of fold them into the rest of the shirt. I really don't know how to explain what I'm doing. I just kind of intuitively found a way to fold them into the rest of the shirt. I do have one area that's left over, which is kind of just awkwardly hanging out here. I'm going to put a few folds in that area and fold it up into the rest of the shirt and hold that in place with a rubber band. With the long sleeve shirts and hoodies, you just have to find a way to try to incorporate the sleeves into the design. Remember, the purpose of tie-dye is to have fun with it and it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so the weather is still a little bit warm outside, so I'm going to actually do this dyeing outside. I have a metal shelving unit, and I'm going to place the shirt on top of the shelving unit, and then on the second shelf, I'm going to place a plastic container to catch any of the runoff from the melting ice and dye. 
To try to keep the dye from blowing around as much, I'm going to use a little bit of soda ash solution, which is in a spray bottle, to lightly spray the top of the shirt. On the top portion of the shirt, or where I fan folded starting at the shoulder, I'm going to use Rust Orange from Dharma. This is one of the zombie colors that was available in October of 2022. I'm not going to go all the way down this folded area, just part way. Remember, I want the two dye colors to try to meet in the middle or to just flow however they want to. In the part where I fan folded starting from the bottom corner, I'm going to add Bracken from Dharma. That too was one of the zombie colors from 2022. So the zombie colors were something special that Dharma did and are no longer available. However, out on Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace, you can purchase some of the zombie colors which people have bought from Dharma in large quantities and repackaged in smaller quantities. I'll put a link down below in the description for this video to that Facebook group. They also sell quite a few of the other colors that Dharma has offered in the past as special seasonal colors. So if you're like me and you maybe had some of those that you really loved but can't get anymore, that's a good outlet for where you can purchase those in something other than a five pound quantity. Now I'm gonna add the ice on top and I'm using some two inch cubes of ice which I've made from a silicone mold which I purchased from Amazon. I have links for the molds down below too. The ice cubes are thick enough that I'm not going to have to add a whole bunch more ice. And normally they're a little bit easier to keep on top of the shirt, but this time there's just enough curve and that area is pretty small on one end of the shirt that they just keep wanting to fall off. For the wider area, I'm going to use a larger chunk of ice, which I've made in a disposable container. I've included some process photos so you can see how the ice melted and the dye dissolved and moved. I purposely did not add any more ice to the top of this shirt, even though I do see some white spots left. I could have added a little bit more ice because there is a little bit of undissolved dye left sitting on top, but I'm using both of these colors for the first time. And so I really don't mind if there's a little bit of white left on the shirt. I wanna see the color splits really well. I've used Bracken before, but I don't know that I've ever used it totally by itself, where there isn't another color that I'm attributing the color splits to. After all the ice melted, I placed the shirt inside of a large plastic container that has a rack down in the bottom and just allowed the shirt to process. I left it for probably about 24 to 48 hours after all the ice melted. I did the normal rinse out by rinsing the shirt in cold to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied it and warmed the water to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I did my usual soaking process as well where I add some really hot water either to my sink or to a plastic container, add a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allow the shirt to soak. I change out the water when it cools off and I continue that soaking process until the water is almost clear. So after the water was almost clear, I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Now that the shirt's been washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So first off, I love this dye design for using two different colors. I have a design that I really like to do, which is similar to this one, except I tie both of the fan folds at the same time. So obviously they're the same color palette. But I think this would be a great design if you wanted to do colors that didn't necessarily go together. Like maybe somebody wanted an orange and a purple shirt. Well, you know, if you put those two colors together on a shirt, wherever they meet, they turn brown. So I think this one would be a great design for that. Just leave a little extra white space in between the two colors where they came close to each other, but they didn't really ever mix and touch and make brown. The colors did end up touching on this shirt, but not a whole lot. And I don't see a whole lot of mixing between the two colors. Of course, one of the colors is darker. So if they did mix, it's not gonna show up a lot. But for the most part, the colors kind of stayed separate just barely started touching each other. Up on one sleeve, 
not the one where I started the fan fold, but the opposite sleeve or the shoulder, you can see where those two colors kind of intermingle a little bit more up in that area. I do really like the two colors though. This is the first time using rust orange and I think it's a pretty color. I was kind of expecting a few more color splits, but I'm not disappointed in the color. There are kind of some lighter peachy orangey colors and then I do have a little bit of taupe that came out of that color as well. The bracken though is really a pretty color. I love the green that came out of that color. Here again, I wouldn't normally ever put orange and green on a shirt together, but it really works. And I think this one looks really pretty. I like the sleeves too. Remember I didn't really fold them, fold them. I just kind of made a rough fan fold in them and folded them to where I could fit them into the rest of the design. But I like the color on them. I think it looks cool and I'm pretty pleased with them. So what do you guys think about this technique and what do you think about these colors? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. I might try this one again and possibly use some colors which I wouldn't normally put together. Like I said, this one's kind of fun to mess around with. I think it has some possibilities. So if you guys have enjoyed this video and are enjoying the content of my YouTube channel, I sure would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so that you can receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.